SQL injection is one of the most common type of attack used against websites or even APIs which are using SQL databases. Injection occurs when maliciously crafted inputs are submitted by an attacker, causing application to perform unintended action. Let's take a look into example of vulnerable login form and try to log in. Login failed. As suggested, let's try to add quote character in password field. The application crashed. It means that it might have SQL injection vulnerability. The SQL script under the hood might look something like this. The quote is inserted into SQL string, which makes it invalid. That is why it crashes. Let's follow the hint and enter proposed value into the password field. And as a result, we have successfully logged in without even knowing the password. That happened because we have injected always true condition and commented the rest of the query, so it still remains valid. So now we select from users whose email equals to specified one and password is empty or one equals one, which is always true. You can try this and even more interesting practice exercises at hexplaining.com. So what are possible risks? First of all, as we already saw in previous example, it's a risk of bypassing security. So that attacker can log into the system with someone else's account. Secondly, it is possibility of extracting more data than is expected by functionality or current user permissions, which can end up with SQL statement similar to this. Second part of condition will be true for any record in user's table. Having such statement can end up displaying the whole table. It could also end up with data losses, like dropping the table or even the whole database. So what should we do? First and main thing, don't use string concatenation in your SQL queries. Here how it would look like in C -sharp code. As you might notice, login and password are injected using string interpolation as is. As a result, this query is not safe and vulnerable to SQL injection. Instead, you should be using SQL parameters. In that case, your database engine will do required checks to prevent possible injections. Notice that we are not injecting strings into query as is, but using parameters by their names. Additionally, you should validate your input data as strictly as possible. Please note that it's all about server-side validation. You should not rely on client-side validation as it's easy to get around it. For example, if it's only expected to input number in the field, then it should be properly restricted and strongly typed on server side. For text fields, depending on specific use case, you might even want to validate and disallow to input some or all special characters. One more good practice is to grant your application minimum required permissions that would be enough for it to operate. In that case, even if someone was able to find a gap in your security, he is still limited on what can be done. As an example, your server most likely needs permissions to modify the data. However, it might not need the ability to modify the DB structure itself. And please remember that cybersecurity is not just a single wall. It is number of layers in which you should try to restrict possible risks as much as possible. That was the end of this video. Please let me know what you think about it.